I'm your guy Kenny B aka Kinetics and I'm here today to give you guys a full rundown tutorial on the Aurox wallet. I'll give you a couple reasons why it's become my new favorite wallet and uh, I think before we even get to that point I think we really need to talk about why you guys need to self custody. So when you're using an EVM compatible chain like Ethereum or Pulse Chain or Polygon or BSC you have so many options now that are um, web3 capable wallets that can actually interact with the websites and the contract on the blockchain itself and too many of you guys are still using centralized exchanges not your keys not your coins so what that means is if you have all of your coins on a centralized exchange ftx is a great example of this when they go down you don't get your coins back because you have no custody of those coins they can all also arbitrarily just shut down uh, any account when they see transactions that they don't like so I recommend also setting up a second um, Chrome browser with a second profile on it and setting up a second wallet kind of as a buffer wallet. So you, you should be using two wallets. You should be using one to go in and out of, of the centralized exchanges and then will that one be connected or at least send your, your funds to and from um, the wallet that you're actually going to be doing all your transactions out of because we've seen some of these exchanges decide that they arbitrarily do not like some of the transactions you are doing in crypto as if they have a say in what your money is. So it's a little bit easier to buffer those and, uh, and not give them cause to shut down your account. A lot of you guys have seen this as of recently. So great reason why not to use a centralized exchange. I've heard the term be used and I really like this term that uh, use, use a centralized exchange like a bathroom. You get in, do your business, you get out, you don't spend the night there, you don't sleep there, you don't park your money there. So with that in mind, I'm gonna tell you there's a couple other Web3 browser wallets out there. I really like them. Um, Rabi wallets turned out to be a pretty good wallet. Um, Internet Money wallet I think is a really good wallet as well. But my personal favorite has become the Aurox wallet. So let me get into that and then or why it's my favorite wallet. And then we'll go ahead and get into how you actually get one of these things set up. So the, the, the first reason I really like it is it's very easy to use. It's very similar to like MetaMask, except for they don't track your IP address. Um, they don't block the swaps for your favorite coins. Like my favorite is hex.com and uh, the swap function within the MetaMask wallet. While it was already overpriced to use anyway, you can't actually even use hex. It'll come up, but you can't even click on it. So they might just arbitrarily decide that the token that's your favorite that you, they're not going to allow you to trade with in the future as well. So with that in mind, there's a lot of other features like a, a, almost like a chart balance of what your value of your crypto is in your account. I really like that. It is now um, not just uh, supported in the wallet for Ethereum and it was already supported for Pol uh, Polygon and BSC, but it's also supported for Pulse Chain for those of us out there that like new and up and coming layer ones. Uh, we can get into that in another tutorial in the future. Uh, there's just a lot of feature rich things you can do with this wallet. And so I think the most important thing we do at this point in time is we just get into it. Let's go ahead and discuss how it is you get this thing set up. All right, everybody, as you can see here, I clicked on the link in the description below to take me to the Aurox wallet. And here I am sitting here with the download page. So you can look at different things about this wallet and we'll, we're going to go through a lot of this. So that it might save you the time of actually having to go through this individually. But what we will look at first is that I need to get it on my web three browser. So I'm going to click it for desktop on the Google Chrome. As I click this, it's going to pop up add to Chrome. We're going to add this extension. Keep in mind, guys, if I'm going too fast, you can slow this video down to half speed. But what it's going to do is it's going to come up into my downloads bar and it is done. It automatically takes me to this page right here. So what this reminder is right here is that you need to add this extension. You need to pin it to the front of the page so it's available whenever you want. So if you come up here to this puzzle piece up here on the top right of your browser, you click it you'll see the Aurox wallet here. What you want to do is you want to actually pin it. So I click pin and it automatically makes that warning go away, which, or the reminder I should say. So there's the Aurox wallet. As we scroll down to the very bottom, you're gonna get, see some options for either creating a new wallet or uploading or not even uploading, but 
restoring an existing wallet. So if you had a previous wallet, if you had MetaMask before you found out JP Morgan bought them out and started tracking IPs and stopped you from switching or swapping the coins that you like, then you want to switch, but you still got funds on that other side on one of those other wallets and you don't want to use that wallet any longer. You can use this and put in your 12 word seed phrase to restore access to those funds on the blockchain. But what we're going to do here for tutorial sake is we're going to create a new wallet. So we're going to uh, choose an ENS username. Essentially what this is, is you can, you can, uh, um, buy domains that are tied to this, that can tie to your Ethereum address. You'll be able to go on EtherScan and you'll be able to see that address is tied to, to the, the blockchain address that you'll be using to send and receive funds from. I'm not going to go into that today for tutorial sake. We can probably touch on that. Put in the description below or not. I'm sorry, not the description. Put in the comments below whether you want me to go over that or not. So for now, we're just going to choose one. So I'm going to say CJ for crypto junkies. Hit continue. And we're going to create a new password. Um, I'm going to put something in here just for the sake of putting something in here. And I'm going to create a new password. I probably will not be using this wallet. I will actually switch to when we get further into the tutorial, I'll switch into one that I've actually already created. That way uh, you guys can do whatever you want with this one. You can go check it anytime you want to see if there are funds in it. It's totally up to you guys. Um, do what you will with it because people will have access to it because I'm going to reveal the private seed phrase on screen today. So I understand that Rx cannot recover this password for me. So keep in mind, you need to write this down, keep it safe, keep it dry, keep it uh, free from fire, all of those things. Make sure you keep it safe because Orox cannot let you back in. There is another way to back the, uh, to gain access to these again. It'll be in the next step and we'll go over that here in just a minute. So I understand that Orox cannot recover this password for me. Hit complete. And here we go. We've got 12 word seed phrase. The order in which these appear is actually very, very important. Make sure you write these down, engrave them into metal. Um, you, there's different hardware wallets out there, cold storage hardware wallets out there that you can use um, to, re, to, to save these seed phrase. But this is literally the keys to the kingdom as far as your tokens are concerned on the block that are stored on the blockchain. So this is what allows you to have access to them. So in this case, we're just going to quickly go through this. Um, I'm going to copy the phrase to a clipboard and put them somewhere else here so I can quickly refer to them as we are going through the next stage here. So I understand that if I lose my recovery phrase, there is no way to recover my, my wallet. So we'll hit continue. And now they want us to confirm that we did copy it down. So I'm going to go through over here where I pasted it and I'm going to go ahead and let's see. Go ahead and confirm these a few minutes later. Okay. As you can see, I've got all 12 seed phrases or words for the seed phrase in here. I'm going to hit complete to set up. Now on this screen right here, you will actually see a bunch of different, we're going to go ahead and get rid of this, the AI chat box where you can see that there's a bunch of different little tutorials. Feel free to go through this at your uh, own convenience, but I'm going to go through a lot of this stuff today. Um, just for the entry level beginners that, that need to understand why and how these wallets function. So at this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and bring up my other browser where I've already created a wallet for us. And I'm going to click on the wallet and I am in here now. So you can see, um, I've got my wallet named. And it's got an, an address, an Ethereum address. This is very, very important. So something very important for you guys to understand, especially you newbies out there that are just getting started with crypto. This is the address that you can send coins to from another wallet. And this will be the address that you send funds from this wallet into something else. You can also check it out on Etherscan uh, so you can see what your token balance is. But fortunately, one thing I really like about the Orox wallet is it's got functionality to have your tokens added in here. And some of them are already recognized by the network and will automatically be added as you receive them into your, into your, uh, your wallet. So what I want to do now at this point in time is I want to send funds over 
from a, I'm going to go ahead and do this from a centralized exchange. I could do it from any other web three browser, EVM compatible, um, network that's on our web three wallet. That's on the same network is what this is on, which is on Ethereum currently at this point in time. What we're going to want to do is you're going to want to copy, hit this copy button it says copy to clipboard. You will take this over to your centralized exchange. You will choose, or you will put that in when you hit withdraw on the centralized exchange, you will add it in, in the case of like cracking, you might have to add a wallet and then verify it on your email address, verify that you added a wallet for withdrawal. So I'm adding this part in after the fact, the reason why I feel it's necessary is some of you guys don't have a lot of experience withdrawing from, uh, centralized exchanges and things. So I thought, you know, it's, I probably better just add this little piece in here just so you get a little better understanding. So take my Kraken um, account right here. Obviously I have very little money in here. I don't use centralized exchanges to park money. I believe in self custody, like I had said earlier in the video. So I just wanted to show you guys though, say we wanted to take this withdraw and we were to click this withdraw and say we wanted to withdraw ethereum and we wanted to choose the network that we were sending it to we want to send it to the ethereum network we want to send it to this arbitrum wallet wallet so i've already got it in here because i've already approved this address to be one of the addresses that i can withdraw to on kraken um it's very similar with coinbase you're just going to literally hit withdraw or send um is what some of the i think that's what it says on coinbase and um what you would do is you would take this copy this up here in the top right again you hit that copy to clipboard and then when it says what address i had to add a new address and so we could just call it test for now and then i would paste now it's since it's already on my um clipboard i just need to paste it in here now that address for this is paste is is copied one thing i always check to see is the first four so 0x94 matches 0x94 and the last four a73 or 7a732 a732 looks like we're good to go then you would add the withdrawal address and then you would send it there um it's already set up in this case we would set up the amount that we wanted to send you know if we had a full eth we could send a full eth minus their withdrawal fees and then we would wait after we withdraw the ETH. You, number one, you have to wait for the exchange to process the withdrawal. And number two, you got to wait for the blockchain to confirm the transaction. So the validator nodes verify, yes, we have so many confirmations that it's hit the wallet. Once there's enough confirmations, your wallet will tell you that those funds are in there. You can go into the transactions and you'll see them under here again. So just wanted to touch base on that for those of you who have any kind of question at all how to get it off a centralized exchange onto your wallet in the first place. And now I'm going to send over just a few funds and then I'll come back after I go ahead and add a little bit of Ethereum as well. It's very important to know that the networks that you're operating on, they use some token or some coin to uh, pay for gas fees. The reason for the, the use of gas fees on a network is so that there's some kind of cost associated with it. So you can't just, continue to spam the network with a bunch of transactions and not let other people um, transact on the network. It's a, essentially a DDoS attack, if any of you guys are familiar with that. So there has to be some cost to do so, so that you don't have that problem where people are just trying to destroy the network. So I'm gonna go ahead and send all um, the USDT I feel comfortable with at this point in time and some Ethereum to do some gas transactions. And I'll show you a little bit more once I get back. A few minutes later. All right, as you guys can see here, I've already uh, funded this wallet with $11.13 worth of Ethereum, which is 0 0.007130 Ethereum, and $8.13 of USDT, which is 8.136 coins. So now I've got some funds in here. Now I can do fun things. Now, one thing that you can do, just for an example, I'm going to go ahead and show everybody this, is that you can actually do... If you uh, use a swapping protocol, this will be maybe another tutorial in the future, but I just want to show you how the, the wallet actually connects to the protocol and the web page that you are trying to interact with. So I'm going to go to um, uniswap.org 
and I'm going to hit, hit this launch app button right here. You can shortcut that by just typing in app.uniswap.org and get started here. I don't like um, Uniswap personally. They used to be true DeFi. Now they're charging to use the front interface. There's a small fee on top of the actual swap fee itself. And uh, there's a lot of discussion about now it's optional to um, KYC yourself using this thing. In the future, I don't think that's going to be an option. I think they're going to go to full KYC. So we'll just use this as an example. And then I'll show you a uh, different version or a different front end for the Uniswap contract that I personally like and I personally use. And I'll put that in the description below so you guys have that for future reference. So the first thing we want to do is we want to hit connect. And then we're going to choose MetaMask. And this will automatically interject. And we'll say, yes, we want to connect the uniswap.org website with our Aurox wallet. So we'll hit connect. And now we are connected here. You can see I have 0 0.007 ETH available to trade into any token I want. Say we wanted to do some Ether. Say we wanted to buy one USDT, which is equal to a dollar. It would cost me 0 0.00064365. And so we can hit this swap button. Well, if we want to confirm the swap. And one thing I really like about this wallet that I've not seen with any other wallets, this is another one of the features that I absolutely love is that you can simulate the transaction to see what's going to happen. It'll even give you a, a big red flag or a yellow flag if it's not familiar with the protocol, but a red flag if it knows that if the wallet knows that the protocol that you're trying to interact with is a scam to keep you from getting your wallet dumped and emptied. Hit that simulate transaction and you will see that it's going to take 0 0.000676 Ethereum out of my wallet and it's going to put one U, um, USDT on here. I'm not going to continue because the swap fees, depending on the cost of gas at the time, in other words, how busy the Ethereum network is, you don't want to waste money on small swaps like this because it's probably going to cost me five, six bucks, maybe three bucks to swap. And it's not worth it to get $1 in this case. So we're going to go ahead and reject that. But if we hit continue, actually, we'll go ahead and hit continue just so you can see here, the network fee is going to cost me $3.56. Um, I can offer a lower price. It may take a lot longer to go through and it may not go through at all. The transaction may fail or I can pay high to make sure that it goes through. I am in this case, I'll go ahead and save it at that medium fee. This is the site recommended recommended fee. And this will tell me the, the transaction details and what contract I'm interacting with, which you can look up on Etherscan. And again, for new users, that's not necessary unless you really want to track where everything goes on the blockchain. I'm going to hit reject. Again, it's not worth it at this price. But this is just to give you a good example of how this all works. So the website that I actually like to use that I would recommend, I'm going to go ahead and click off of this, is, is uniswap.hedron, H-E-D-R-O-N dot pro. So uniswap.hedron.pro. This is the front end that I like because this doesn't censor the coins that I like. So this is true DeFi. And for that reason, I want to use something that is in line with my beliefs. That's just a personal preference. If you, some of these things, if you don't mind paying an extra fee and you, and, and Uniswap supports the coins that you want, that's fine. This is just a different front end to use. Uh, in this case, Hex is my favorite. It's blocked by Uniswap at this point in time. So I will not be using it. Um, so I use this website, which has a lot of my favorite coins already in, in the top. Um, what is that? Eight coins that it suggests that we trade into. So that's just another option for you guys. So back to the features on the wallet here, since we're not going to actually interact with anything right now, we're not going to send funds. We've already received them. So you saw how to, to receive them in here. Um, if you're interested, feel free in the comments below to let me know if you're interested in seeing how to send. It's very simple. It's just that I'll go ahead and actually start processing the, the transaction. So I can either click on the coin that I want to send. Or I can click on this action button down here and send to receive. That would be the one that shows my, my public wallet address. That's this address right here, which is this one that you can actually copy from here. So you can copy it here and send it to someone or send it to yourself and then send funds to it. But in this case, if we wanted to send out, we could say, okay, we want to send USDT. We want to 
we would paste in the address we wanted to send it to the amount that we'd want to send and then we can preview it and see if we're willing to pay the gas fee to send it there sending coins typically isn't too expensive it's cheaper to send ethereum itself than it is the erc20s which are the tokens um that's a whole nother um topic we can get into again if you if you want further explanation about what a difference between the coin to to pay the gas fee on a network is versus what a a token built on top of the network, the smart contracts that are built on top of a network. I can go into detail about that. Just let me know in the comments below. But we're not gonna send at this point in time, but that would be how you would do it. From here, we also have transactions. So this shows that we received ETH and we received USDT. It's got a timestamp. This green means that it went through so that we know that it happened. We can even click on it and get more about the transaction details. So I think it's worth mentioning, even though we discussed this earlier, that there's different decentralized protocols that you can actually go and swap on. Like we showed you Uniswap and uniswap.hedron.pro earlier. Um, there is actually a swapping function available within the wallet itself, which can save you a couple of steps. Uh, all you would need to do in that case to be able to use this feature with this wallet is click on that action button again, and then hit the swap. And right here, you'll see the different swap from and swap to. Let's say we're going to swap from Ethereum to my favorite token, Hex, which is supported by this wallet. One ETH for 353,000 Hex. As you can see in red here, that exceeds my balance. We don't have very many funds in this, in this particular wallet, but that would give you an idea of what that would look like before we previewed it and went ahead and uh, processed the transaction. Uh, something worth of note, the lower the slippage, the better the price you're going to get. Sometimes liquidity pools are thin, uh, but the higher, so you might have to have a higher slippage uh, tolerance to be able to make a trade happen for the amount of coins that you want if you're willing to um, lose a little bit of value. So say you had $100 worth of Ethereum and the liquidity between ETH and, and HEX on a, the decentralized exchange that this is aggregating through. Uh, didn't have enough liquidity there that uh, maybe you lost $5. So you only got $95 worth of hex out of $100 worth of Ethereum. Um, so that's something you might have to increase the slippage tolerance, but you get a better price the lower that that slippage tolerance is. So I thought that was worth noting that this also had that built-in capability to be able to do swaps as well. We can go to ProView, which I really like as a function on this too. So if we go to the ProView, What's really nice about this is this has a trading desk, so to speak, that you can refer to. And we'll go ahead and um, I'll just go ahead and leave that up on the side for now. But this will show you different coins that were recently listed, um, the top volume on these coins. You can look at all different kinds of things. Give me one second here. We'll just connect the wallet real quick so that we can see our you can see that our wallet is now co connected to this trading desk. We can go over to these different tokens. We can see what they're trading for. Um, this does not coverage leverage trading platforms at this point in time. This is mostly spot or and or decentralized exchanges like Uniswap. Uh, if you're over on Pulse Chain, it'd be like PulseX. Um, and then you can go to the screener as well. So you can actually search for the token that you want to see. In this case, we can just go ahead and put in like hex. We'll see hex on Ethereum pops up right here. Click on it and you can see that it is up for the day, but this will give us a lot of different options here. There is a token associated with this trading platform with this wallet. It's called the Eurus token. If you buy this and you stake it, that's the lowest. I've, these are the lowest prices I've ever seen this thing. In the last bull market, it ran up to about $300. But if you have 50 of these tokens, you can stake them through the wallet. I'm not going to go through that today. It gives you more trading um, indicators that you can use, uh, buy and sell indicators, as well as some other perks like their Discord community and things of that nature. Not a uh, big thing to go into right now. Again, if you want more information, let me know in the comments below and maybe I can do a, a short video on that information as well for you. But going back to this uh, dashboard, it tells me what I'm holding. You know, it's it's a little more ETH than I have USDT in there. My portfolio balance went from zero up to almost $20. Woo. And then uh, you can see what the price is, my balances on them, and what the charts 
just a short term version of what the chart looks like and the volume traded in those tokens over the last 24 hours. So you guys are probably getting sick of hearing of all the different options and ways that you can swap from one token or one coin to another within these decentralized exchanges and these Web3 wallets. I got yet another one for you here. If you look on the trading desk here, you'll see that there is, whenever I go to tokens over here on the side, um, there is the option to buy or sell tokens from here as well. So this one's already on the hex token for the chart here. Again, it's up even more now. Um, but I can buy using ETH into hex. Hex is already, uh, since I'm on that chart, it, and I've got it on buy, it automatically defaults as the token and I can choose which other tokens I'd like to trade into X if I would like to choose. So, so another option for you, just so you guys know. So for those of you who are interested in actually adding the pulse chain, cause I know there's a lot of my viewers that are interested in, in pulse chain, just as I am, I'm very, very bullish on this new layer one. I think it's actually probably the most censorship resistant of all chains out there. A lot of nodes that are run on Ethereum are actually AWS servers. It'd be a lot easier to shut a lot of those down than it would be something that's decentralized with 45,000 nodes across the world. So you'll hit this cog up here. This is just an added bonus if anyone's interested. And you will go ahead and hit networks. Now, these are the active networks that automatically are uh, propagated on the, the wallet that you can use right away. Ethereum is the one we're going to use the most. Add remove networks. If we scroll down, you can see Pulse Chain is one of those, those options. So there's a lot of options to natively add without having to add an RPC to them. Hit save. Don't remind me again. And now it's added here to my active networks. So I hope this tutorial has been comprehensive enough for you to at least get started. There's obviously more things we could go into, um, how to use the blockchain correctly. Again, if you guys have any questions, please put them in the comments below and then uh, we'll go ahead and address those, maybe make some future videos on those. Um, as far as this wallet's concerned, it's one of the best user interfaces that I've used that in my opinion, um, everybody has their own preference. Um, we also have for a lot of you new guys out there, a good buddy of mine, Crypto Coffee has like a master um, class level course that he sells. Uh, I'll put that in the description below so you guys can get your hands on that as well. Um, that is an amazing resource to go a little bit farther and have a little more comprehension uh, as to what it means to uh, utilize crypto and, and the right way to do it and include security and different protocols that you can make money on and different things of that nature. So that'll be down there below. I'll go ahead and put the uh, uniswap.hedron.pro link down in below. And uh, you guys can find me on either Twitter or telegram at the real kinetics t-h-e-r-e-a-l-k-n-t-x i'm on twitter and telegram once again that will be in the links in the description below so you guys can copy and paste that into one of those two and you can message me at any time because i got some crypto adjacent opportunities to earn some pretty big cash um so if you guys are interested in something like that and you've got some spare funds that you guys want to make some money off of i've got some opportunities for you Feel free to reach out to me. If not, no big deal. In the meantime, I wish you guys the best. Let me know what else we can do for you guys here. Appreciate you.